Hello, this is Susan Mead coming to you from North Louisiana on this most holy week of the year. Passover is today. Yeah, there's a red ribbon over my door. I put it up last night because I believe that the Jewish heritage is our heritage. Because when Jesus returns, he's redeeming the Jews and all of us who choose to believe. So I took part in putting the red over the lintel and the doorpost of my house, that the spirit of death flies right over me. And with this COVID going around, a coronavirus that's pandemic, that means everywhere around the world, I thought it was very appropriate to participate in the foundation of our faith. So as I share a little bit about what God's been telling me about coronavirus, COVID, Corona means a crown, and what I see is a self-appointed crown on this disease, D-I-S-E-A-S-E, causing dis-ease amongst the people of the world. This king that's taken over all the mountains of the media, the government, the education system, religion, you name it, every factor of life the economic side, you name it. He's come in to disrupt. And if I look at the Bible, I read this verse, John 10, 10, and it says, Jesus is saying, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy, but ah, Jesus come to give life abundant. And I like to share it like this. In your left hand, put liar, steal, kill, destroy. In your right hand, put ah, Jesus, Come to give life abundant, abundant life, Jesus. And if we look at Corona and we say, why did God cause this? Why did God do that? Why did God kill all these? Why, why, why? God, God, God. And we look at it's stealing, it's killing, it's destroying. (coughs) So many things. Are we looking at Jesus and God to blame or the enemy? I'm going to go back to Corona, meaning king, meaning crown. This disease that's going around is a crown upon it, a self-appointed crown is what God showed me. That halo around it. I will, I will, I will, I will exalt myself above the most high king. So this self-appointed crown is trying to take down everything that stands for good in God. And COVID, when I saw something the other day and it said C-O-V-I-D, Christ over viruses and infectious disease. And I thought, amen, that's a good acronym for that COVID corona. (coughs) It is covered by the name of Christ, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. So when we look at that, I want you to remember So many things that God has said about us do not fear. How many times is it in the Bible? At least 365, for one for every day of the year. Do not fear, for I am with you. And what's resonating in my heart right now for all of us is 1 Timothy, I'm going to forget, 2-7, I think. I've not given you a... Yeah, 2 Timothy 1-7, I turned it around. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So let's look at that. So what has God given us? Abundant life. He's given us power. Whose power? It comes straight from God, so it's God's power. And when we look at the source of power and we say, with the words of our mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we are saved. For it's with our (coughs) heart and mind that justification and salvation come. So, you know, we are God's children. We are co-heirs to Christ. We have everything that Jesus had because He is in us. So we have the power of God in us. Have you forgotten that? Sometimes I have. In the midst of all this, I forget. 
and I fall flat on my face. And when I'm looking at my feet, I am defeated. And that's not where God wants any one of his children to be. And if you haven't turned and said, Christ, you're my king, is it time? Have you thought about that? What if you don't have tomorrow? Are you going to turn and say, Jesus, forgive me. I didn't believe. I'm delayed. Whatever the reason is, it doesn't matter. But Jesus is king. And if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's not for just right now and for a moment. That's for all eternity. You get to spend eternity. That's God's power. And what if you let that into your heart and into your life? The power of God. Not just to change today. And you think, well, what is it going to change? I've got God's power, but I can't stop that corona. No, but when all of God's people unite in prayer, (coughs) we can make some change in this world. But back to that verse. We've got God's power. And then it says of love. You have the God of the universe who created the heavens and hung the stars in the sky who says, I love you. I know the number of hairs on your very head. I know when you lay down and when you get up, I know every thought that goes through your through your mind. You are my child. I created you. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I sing over you and invite you to drink from my river of delights. Do you want to know that, God? I do. I do. And I thought I knew him all my life. But several years ago, I don't remember the year, but it's been 14 or 15 years ago, I lost a sister, a brilliant Ph.D. nurse, to the unthinkable. She bought a gun and used it on herself. And the minute my mother told me that I'd lost my precious sister, I physically felt a caress from left shoulder to right shoulder across my broken heart. I heard the loud, audible voice of the Lord speak into my right ear, such words of love that I had to get to know who is this God that is speaking to me. And then the peace that passes understanding fell, encompassed. Thinking, I don't know the words because there's no earthly words for a heavenly experience. But the peace of his presence was so real so real and then all chaos broke loose after that but he gave me his word so I wouldn't believe the words of the world I wouldn't believe that she died and gone to hell because he loved her he loved her and he told me how much he loved her and because she believed in Jesus she was in his presence and that raises my faith and I had to get to know this God that loves us so much the hounds of heaven are pursuing us even after we've said we believe he wants us to come even closer to get to know him better can you see a little bit more can you imagine if we got nose to nose with the great God of the universe how all encompassing his love would be would it permeate every cell of your being Would it woo you into him? And if not, I pray that he melts your stony heart and gives you a new heart of flesh and he opens your eyes to see the truth and the beauty of who he is and he gives you ears to hear because faith comes by hearing. But the next thing that he says in that verse is self-control. And I think it's so very interesting And he puts it back on us. Because he's not going to do for us what he told us to do. And he's given us free will. We will always have a choice. He even gave a choice to the angels in heaven. Because that's where the first fall occurred. Was Lucifer, the most beautiful angel. In charge of the musicians and the worship of heaven decided he made a decision he lost his self 
control and decided to elevate himself above the Most High. Is that what you've done? Is that what I've done? Then I repent. Father, forgive me for I've fallen short. For we're all sinners in need of a Savior. And it's such truth. If we cannot control ourselves, what can we control? Nothing else. Nothing else. But God so loved each one of us. If it was just you. He would have sent his son Jesus to live and die and be raised to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father for all eternity just for you. But he's not going to do it again. He's not going to send Jesus again to die on the cross because that's already been done. The next time Jesus comes, it's going to be to redeem his children that have turned their hearts to him their hearts, by choice. They decided, you know what? Jesus, you are the Son of God. And I believe God raised you from the dead. And with our heart, we're justified. And with our mouth, we're saved. It tells us in Romans. And I pray that you tell Jesus how much you love him. And if you don't believe in him, take this to heart. He believes in you. And he's given you a sound mind. So make a sound decision. Control yourself and take every thought captive unto Christ. And if you choose to do that, when we step into the love of God, we step into the shadow of the Almighty. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, read Psalm 91. He's our protector. And I tell you what, Psalm 9111 is my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. For he orders his angels to protect you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. For me, I was sitting in the grandstand at a marathon in Boston in 2013 when a bomb blew up directly across the street and my eyebrows were singed from the fire that went five stories high. And eight seconds later, another one exploded. For he orders his angels to protect you everywhere you go. We were not harmed. We were scared. But I was covered. He orders his angels to protect you everywhere you go. So lift up your head, darling. For God is the lifter of our heads. Don't look at your feet, because when you're looking at your feet, the Bible says the enemy is under your feet. So let God be the lifter of your head. Look up. Don't be defeated by the liar that comes to steal, kill, destroy. But go to the one that says, I come to give you life, abundant life. Speak life. For life and death are in the power of the tongue. Speak life. Speak the name of Jesus Christ. And let him know that he is your Lord and Savior. So I thank you, Jesus, that you've opened our eyes and our hearts to the truth of you. I invite you into my heart. If you've never done that, say it now. And then call one of us. Reach out. Leave a message. We would be honored to help you get to know this God who loves you so exquisitely. He lets you see this message today because it was his invitation that brought you closer and closer and closer until you could feel the very heart of your God who loves you eternally and uniquely for he created you to be you. May God bless you richly. This is Susan Mead signing off. Experience love like you've never experienced it before because God is love.